What is going on YouTube? Welcome to the Porsche Network. My name is Satch and in this video I'm going to show you eight mistakes that Porsche owners are making and we're starting right now. What's going on YouTube? Welcome to the video and as I say in this video I'm going to give you eight mistakes that Porsche owners are making. Uh, not all Porsche owners but I see a lot of this happening too often for my liking so I thought I'd make a video about it and hopefully maybe give the new guys who are new into Porsches or they've, they've, they've only just sort of got their new Porsche uh, maybe a few hints and tips on what not to do. I don't want to see this as a, a finger pointing exercise I want it to be uh, maybe a sort of a hints and tips guide on what you maybe you should be doing that you're not aware of. So for this video I think I'm going to get into the car and we'll take it for a drive and uh, we'll talk about the eight mistakes that people are making. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I really should crack on with the video instead of having fun myself in this car. But what I want to say to you is that before I, I work my way through the list, this is in no way, shape or form me having a go or me calling out Porsche owners for doing something wrong because a lot of it is simply down to education. A lot of these guys don't even know what they're doing wrong. And, you know, myself included in that because the only way you learn is by making mistakes and that is exactly how I've learned with these cars you know nobody is born with the information instilled into them you know you have to learn these things and whether it's by you know learning these things before you make a mistake or learning after you make a mistake then it doesn't really matter ultimately you get there in the end and as long as you learn from those mistakes the chances are you're prolonging the life of your Porsche the first mistake I see Porsche owners doing all the time is using the incorrect fuel these cars are performance engines, and as such, they should be using performance octale, octane fuel. Now, when I say octane fuel, I don't mean racing fuel, which has an octane of something like 102 or 103, but I actually mean use fuel with an octane rating of something like 90, 98 or 99 RON or RON. RON stands for research octane number, and the higher the octane, generally the better quality the fuel will be and the higher the octane number the more compression the fuel can withstand before igniting and this is going to give you better performance protect your engine and possibly prolong the life of your engine now for most of these Porsche cars if you open the fuel flap it'll probably give you an octane number of what the uh, Porsche brand recommends you actually use on these cars in fact let's pull over and have a look at the octane rating on this Cayman Okay, so pull this, and there's a little sticker right there, you see, and it's telling us, I don't know if you can read that, 98, that's ROZ stroke RON. So ROZ must be the same as RON, but just maybe in German, I guess. So 98 RON or RON is what's required in this car. I recently filled up with Shell V-Power, which is uh, 99 RON, so um, yeah, good performance all around. And you know that fuel is going to cost you a little bit more, but it's certainly worth it in the long run, because as I say, you're going to protect your engine, you're going to get better performance. Okay, you know what, the roads are getting quite busy actually, so I'm going to try if I can and just sneak into this little car park here. Okay, the next mistake I see Porsche owners making is unfortunately putting their cars through a car wash or taking these cars to uh, you know these pop-up car washes that just seem to randomly appear and they have like 10 guys working for them these guys are using these brushes against thousands and thousands of cars and then what they're doing is they're using the same brush to go underneath the car to you to wash the underbody wash the wheels wash the, the scuffs on the bumper and then they're going to use that same brush albeit it's probably dipped to go straight onto your car on the next wash 
that in itself is causing swirl marks, it's causing scratches in your paint and you don't even know it. So unfortunately, I don't like to see people using those car washers. I don't like to see you people using the car washers which are attached to petrol stations as well for the exact same reason. Those brushes have brushed up against thousands and thousands of cars. The amount of dirt and minicule, uh, so minuscule scratches they'll have on the bristles, it's all being transferred as a rough surface onto your car. Don't do it. Invest in your own, either a professional to come out and do it, or invest in your own skills, your own time, and your own money to get good products, microfiber cloths, waxes, uh, you know, the, all the shampoos that you need. There's, there's hundreds of thousands of videos on YouTube telling you how to wash your car properly. I use the two bucket method. I'm not gonna go into what that is right now. As I say, there's lots of videos on that on YouTube, but please, for the life of me, don't put it through a car wash. Don't go to one of these dodgy car washes. You're just asking for trouble. Get it done properly. Get it done yourself. Get it done by a professional if you can't do it yourself. Okay, the next mistake Porsche owners are making relates to actually coming into the car and starting the car for the first time. If, I mean, I probably can't give you a very good example on this car because I've been driving it so the engine is warm. But what I'm gonna say is what a lot of people do is put the key in the ignition, they start the car, just as I've done right there. And it's, 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 it seems to be, there seems to be a lot of misinformation and incorrect information online, whereby people think that you need to let the engine warm up, get up to temperature, and then start driving the car. Well, that's not actually true. There are a lot of um, parts in this engine which need to be lubricated before the engine actually gets up to temperature. So what I'd recommend you do is obviously you start the car, you might initially get a say about 1100 RPM on your rev counter. Wait till that drops to maybe just below 1000 RPM, maybe to about 900 RPM. So just to recap, start your car. The revs will probably sit at about 1100 RPM. After a minute or so, the revs will drop to just below 1000 RPM. Once that happens, you're good to start driving, but stay under 2000 RPM. Once your engine is up to temperature, then you can lift the revs above 2000 RPM. It's pretty simple once you've, once you've got the hang of it. You just need to get out of the idea and the mindset of letting your car warm up completely and then driving the car. The next thing I wanna to talk to you about is the servicing of the car. The servicing of the car is obviously very important to make sure that your engine and the rest of the car is running correctly and as smoothly as possible and efficiently as possible. The amount of times I went to see cars or I've, I've looked at cars to potentially buy and the service schedule is just not, it's not there. The service history, sorry, is not there or it hasn't been serviced for two or three years. And I think, well, you know, it's not really um, a good advertisement for that. The fact that you, you've been looking after the car well or not so well as it was. Um, otherwise, you would have spent money and actually serviced the car. So to not service the car, I would say, is definitely to, to devalue your car because when you're buying a Porsche, one of the important factors of buying one of these cars is making sure that the service history is up to date. And if you were looking at a car where the service history wasn't up to date, you'd be thinking, well, why, why am I going to buy this car? I'll obviously not need to put money into it straight away. I know 99% of the Porsche owners out there, 99% of the Porsche owners, that follow this channel will of course adhere to the service schedule and they'll do regular services on their cars. But there's just, maybe they're just not enthusiasts or maybe they're just, they bought, they bought the car thinking, oh yeah, I can afford a Porsche because it costs 10,000 pounds. But in reality, you know, you've got to put more money into these cars to, to keep them in good condition. And if you're not going to do that, well then you shouldn't, you really shouldn't be owning one of these cars. Okay, so I'm going to try and keep this one short because I feel a little bit like a broken record when I keep plugging this kit. But it's, it's, it's under preparing because obviously during the life of these cars, you're going to have problems and you're going to need to put this car into a garage a few times over the car's life. Being under prepared by not having a clue what the fault is can cost you a lot of money, in fact. 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds every time the car goes into a garage, in fact, and that's just to actually find out what the fault code is and what the problem is. Um, basically, my recommendation, and I, like I say, I feel like a bit of a broken record, but I'd rec certainly recommend getting one of these POR version 1.0 kits. You'll see it on screen now. It's a diagnostic tool which, is, uh, which will allow you to read the faults. If your car's got any problems, it'll allow you to read the faults, reset the faults, and ultimately tell you what is wrong with the car. So if you've got a check-in, 
engine light, an ABS, PSM, airbag light, or you need to reset the service light, this is the kit to go for because ultimately in the long run, it's gonna save you money. Every time you put your car into a garage, they're gonna charge you, as I say, 50, 60, 70, depend on the garage and that's pounds by the way, just to hook the car up and actually find out what the fault code is. Now you could do that yourself, so I don't know why people don't invest in these tools. A lot of you guys have got them, and a lot of you guys do, um, but a lot of people I speak to have never even heard of such a tool, so maybe a little bit of education on sort of how you can uh, prevent yourself from spending money in the future is to maybe invest in one of these tools anyway. Like I said, I'm gonna keep that one short. It's not really a mistake, it just needs a bit of uh, awareness, I think, really. Awareness on what the tool can do and why it will benefit you. Okay, second to last mistake that I see a lot of owners doing is, well, I see this a lot on YouTube and I see it a lot on uh, like Facebook forums, like Porsche forums, like the Cayman, the 911 owners. Um, and it is basically a lot of people have trouble with their batteries and, uh, the, well, the alternators. Although they don't know it's the alternator. Basically, a lot, of, a lot of drivers are just sort of, they're driving the car at a weekend and then maybe not driving the car again for maybe two or three weeks. During that time of non-driving, your car needs to be charging. Your, your car needs to be plugged in to what I would recommend is one of these C-Tech chargers, which I covered in one of my previous videos. But the C-Tech charger is gonna keep your battery health good and therefore stop the battery from, uh, I think I was basically saying you need to keep the car charged, otherwise you'll damage the battery and potentially damage the alternator and other electrical parts which are all connected to the battery. I'll end the hard way with my 996. I would park it up for weeks and weeks and weeks and then go back to it, it wouldn't start. In the end, I needed a new battery and a new alternator. It ended up costing me about 400 pounds and that was for me doing the work myself. And we're down to number one, or is it number eight? Anyway, the biggest, the biggest thing, or the biggest mistake that I see Porsche owners doing, and I, I sometimes I wanna shake their heads, and I know a few, of the, a few of these guys myself, and I just wanna, I just wanna go up and shake them because, well, it's, it, it, it's, almost, it's almost criminal activity. The biggest mistake that Porsche owners are getting away with is, well, it's not actually driving their cars. It's letting them sit in a garage just so they can maybe increase the value or they want to sit them in a garage because they don't want the mileage to go over a certain clock at a certain time in the car's life because it'll, it'll devalue the car. And I think it's an absolute crime. Not using these cars can cause all manner of systems to seize up, get lots of flat spots on the tires and the wheels. It's just not a good idea. You know these cars, they're 15, 20,000 pound cars. They're not Bugatti Veyrons. They're not Ferrari, La Ferraris. Drive it, have fun, repeat daily. And that is all I'm gonna say, other than Please subscribe to the Porsche Network if you're not already and you want to see more Porsche hints, tips, reviews and guides. Uh, please like the video if you can. I've got lots more videos coming. I'll be doing a European tour over the next few weeks, so that's definitely one to watch out for. Or if you're watching this a few months after I've actually published the video, then maybe scroll back through some of my older videos uh, to, to watch the European tour. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time on the Porsche Network.